What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to do professional visualizations using the Python package plot nine, which supports the grammar of graphics. So let us get right into it. All right, now why should we learn about an additional visualization package in Python when we already know matplotlib, when we already know Seaborn, Plotly, Bokeh, and so on? The answer is you have different use cases and all those different packages have different strengths. So for example, Plotly and Bokeh are superior to Matplotlib and Seaborn if you want to do some interactive web visualization, some dashboards, for example. And Plot9 has the strength that it uses the so-called grammar of graphics, which is a logical, consistent syntax that is easy to understand and read. Um, and sometimes it makes things easier, especially when you have complicated graphs, the overview is better and you have um, certain use cases in which writing plot nine code is way easier than writing, for example, matplotlib code or Seaborn code. And one reason for that is that plot nine is built on top of pandas. So it's very compatible with pandas. We're going to take a look at this here. And the basic idea of the grammar of graphics is that you have a certain pattern, how you define graphs, which is different from how you do it usually in all those other packages like matplotlib and plotly and so on. You start by defining a plot object based on some data set and then you specify aesthetics then you specify the individual elements and some additional uh, factors and you add them all up like a formula. So you start with a basic object and then you add to that object instead of just calling functions um, like in matplotlib. And we're going to take a look at that here in this video. The first step is to open up the command line and install plot nine by saying pip install plot nine. And once we have that, we can go ahead and just import everything from plot nine. Now, I always mention this when I do videos, I use wildcard imports when I use them for the sake of simplicity for this video to not always have to specify plot nine dot or to not have an endless list of imports. In an actual project, wildcard imports are most of the time not recommended. So you shouldn't do something like from plot nine import everything. This is not a good practice. I'm going to do it for the sake of this video because I want to go through the different things. Usually what you do is you import the specific elements like ggplot, for example, like AES, for example, the different things that we're going to use. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to import everything to keep it simple to not always have to jump back to the import. Then we're going to also say from plot nine dot data, we're going to import the diamond data set, just so that we have some some data to visualize. And in addition to that, we're going to also import and maybe you need to install that as well. So install uh, matplotlib and pandas. The reason we install pandas is because uh, plot nine is based on pandas and because we want to work with the data frame. Uh, but we also want to import matplotlib because the plot that is a result of plot nine needs to be shown and plot nine is also based on matplotlib. So in, to actually show the graph, in the end, you need to say plt.show. So we're going to also import pandas as pd and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Those are the packages that we're going to need. And we can start with a simple, for example, line plot, and you're going to see what the gram of graphics looks like. So we're going to say here that the data frame is going to be just diamonds, uh, we can print this to see what this looks like. Essentially, it's just an ordinary data frame with columns and rows, you can see we have some features here. And what we want to do now is we want to plot a simple, we want to display a simple plot where we plot the price against the carat or carat, what, what's it pronounced? Okay, I just googled it, it's pronounced carrot. So we're going to plot the price against a carrot. And we're going to display this in the form of a line chart. And how are we going to do that? We're going to just say that our plot, we're going to call this plot P is going to be equal to and now we're going to use parentheses and inside of those we're going to use the grammar of graphics. We're going to, to start with a simple ggplot object. So we're going to say ggplot based on the data frame. And we don't specify yet what we want to plot. This is just a plot object. Now to specify the aesthetics and aesthetics is what is on the x axis, what is on the y axis, what color do we want to use and all that we're going to add to this plot object using the plus operator, we're going to add to it the aesthetics. So we're going to just say plus AES, and we're going to add here x equals and we can just provide the string price and y equals carrot. And then we have the aesthetics added to the plot. That's the basic idea. And now in order to do a line chart, we can just add 
a line. We can just say that what we have here with the aesthetics, with the data, we want to add a line that displays all of that. So we're going to say plus, and then we're going to say geom underscore line. So this is the grammar of graphics. You specify an object and you add stuff to it. This is different from what we do in Matplotlib or Pyplot, uh, not Pyplot, sorry, uh, Plotly, where we just say, okay, we have a plot and then maybe we want to manipulate the X axis and maybe we want to add something to it and stuff like that. We just call one function after the other and we provide per, uh, parameters. Here we add the individual things to the plot object. And the resulting object is the P object. And all we need to do to display it is we need to say P dot draw and then PLT show to actually display the result. I don't know if that graph is going to look good, to be honest. Okay, doesn't look so so well uh, or so good. But this would be a line chart, maybe other features would be better suited to display a line chart. But this is how you do it. Now, if you want to display something else, for example, if you want to uh, create a scatter plot, you can just go ahead and instead of saying geom line, you can say geom point. And then you're going to have a scatter plot. So you can see the, how how this actually works, you have the the basic definition of the plot, what do you want to plot, and then you can just say what exactly you want to plot. And we're going to take a look at more advanced examples here in a second, uh, where we're going to have multiple elements in a plot. But that's the basic idea here. We can also now say that we don't want to have the price, we want to have the cut uh, plotted against the price on the y axis. And we want to also say that uh, the fill is going to be the cut. Or maybe before we do that, let me just show you here that we can also on the plot that we just plotted, we can go ahead and say that the color should be equal to the cut. And this would then give us differently colored points. So everything that has to do with the with the uh, design of the plot with the visuals is going to be defined in the aesthetics. That's the basic structure here. So the first structure is we specify a plot, we add aesthetics, and then we add elements. And then we can also add some more advanced stuff like grouping or multiple plots and stuff like that, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Um, so let's go to the bar chart example, we're going to plot the cut against the price and the color or the fill of the bars is going to be determined by the cut. Instead of saying now geom point, we're going to say geom bar. And this, no, what's the problem here? Um, oh, we need to specify another keyword here stat equals identity, then it should work. There you go. And you can see we have a simple bar chart, which uses different colors. Um, now, let me show you two more simple examples. And then we're going to get into something that's actually useful. We're going to plot now first a box plot and then a histogram. So some statistical charts here, we're going to just plot the um, the box plot for the cut against the price. Uh, so we're going to have have it like this geome box plot. And you can see that we just exchanged this. And there you go, you have the different categories here the cut, and then you have the history, uh, the, the box plots for the prices of that category. And then we can also finally go and say, geom histogram. And we can just specify x equals price. And then we have a simple histogram. There you go. Those are the basics of plot nine. All right, now let us move on to the first actually useful example of using plot nine over something like matplotlib. And this is plotting a linear regression line on a data set. This is very simple in plot nine, all we need to do is we need to define some data, or we need to get some data, let's say we have a data frame here, PD data frame, and we're going to say that we're going to have a dictionary and we're going to have x values, those are going to be one, two, three, four, five or something. And then we're going to have y values. Those are going to be 1, 2, 1 1.5, uh, 3, 2.5 or something. And then what we need to do in order to now visualize a linear regression line is we say p equals, we're going to use again the grammar of graphics. So ggplot of the data frame. Uh, we're going to add aesthetics. So AES, x is going to be x, y is going to be y. Then to that we're going to add 
a geom point to make a scatter plot of the data. And in order to now plot a linear regression line, remember in Matplotlib, what you would have to do is you would have to first import something to do the linear regression. You would have to use something like sklearn, define a linear regressor, uh, train it. Then you would have to, um, you know, uh, train the model and and then visualize the curve by using some x values and then predicting and then plotting the prediction and so on. Here you can just say geom underscore smooth and you can say method equals lm which stands for linear model and then we can just say p draw and plt show and that when you plot it is going to be this data set with a linear regression line. As you can see here, also with a confidence interval, um, I think that's a confidence interval that we get there. You can see how easy that goes. You just take a simple scatter plot and you add one more element using the gram of graphics. Now let's do something that's a little bit more complicated, at least when you do it in Matplotlib, but it's still extremely simple when you do it in plot nine or with plot nine. Let's say we have this data set here and we're going to extend it. Now we're going to have uh, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to add some values here like 3.5, 2.5, 3.54. And then we're going to add another column and we're going to call this the group column. And this basically means that each point here is going to belong to a certain category. We're going to call those A, A, A maybe, then B, 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 and then C, 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 just making something up here. And we want to now have three different scatter plots based on the category. So we want to have three subplots side by side, where we have X and Y values plotted using a scatter plot um, for category A, for category B, and for category C, or for group A, B, C. Doing that in Matplotlib would require us to define a subplot or uh, to define three subplots to uh, group the data in the data frame, to define the scatter plots, to uh, style the plot and all this. Here, all we need to do is we need to add one more element to our grammar of graphics. So we can say here again, p equals ggplot based on the data frame. Uh, we're going to add some aesthetics here and the aesthetics are going to be that x is x, y is y. And then all we want to do is we need to do a scatter plot again, geom point. And all we need to add now to accomplish what I just explained is we need to say facet underscore wrap and we can say based on the group. And then I can say P draw, PLT show. And when I run this, look at this, we have A, B, C, and we have three separate scatter plots showing X and Y coordinates or X and Y values for the three different categories. Just to show you here what the code would look like with the comments, uh, in Matplotlib, I'm just going to copy paste it here. This would be the code. We would have to import Matplotlib, pandas, we would have to define the data frame, we would have to define the subplots, we would have to iterate over that, uh, we would have to, uh, to use the group, we would have to enumerate the unique values of the group, we would have to uh, filter, we would have to do a scatter plot for the individual subplots, and we would have to do some styling, and then we could show the plot. This is way more code than we need with just the gram of graphics, where we just add facet wrap and everything is accomplished. So there are some cases in which, in which plot nine makes everything quite easy, but it's of course not always the better choice. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.